Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Donovan Darius, former 10-year NFL player, professional life strategist, performance coach, as well as trainer. And today we're going to talk about how do we get our family to help with chores. Listen, nobody likes to do them, but it always seems like somebody, you know, the same person is responsible for it all the time. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to help get the family to help with chores. Ladies, I already know. You're like, listen, please help me because it seems like I'm the only one that's doing anything around the house. Well, hopefully by the end of this video, you see some ways, you hear some things, some things you can try to get the husbands, to get the other people, to get the kids and everybody to chip in with the chores. I'm going to share some things in this video in terms of things that help and work in my house, household that we're still working on, understanding that this is always something that we got to continue to do. So here we go. So understand this, chores, nobody likes to do them, but they got to be done. I always realized this, this is what I always thought, that in life, especially in the marriage and in a family, that everybody in a family, you have roles and you have responsibilities. Okay, the roles are something that never change. Okay, a husband is always the husband. Okay? The mother is always the mother. The wife is always a wife. And the children are always the children. However, at the same time, if you look at life from a standpoint of roles, then you can get caught up into thinking that, hey, are we thinking traditional roles? Are we thinking contemporary roles? Because when we think about it from that way, that you're traditional or contemporary, a lot of times they tell us who handles the responsibilities. But how many of you guys know we live in different times today? And now, nowadays, back in the day, after World War, you know, before World War II and all that stuff, it was a man's job to provide. It was a man's job to go to work. It was a man's job to make the money and to come home. The wife would be home. Her job was to, her, her responsibility was to clean up and it was to take care of the kids. It was to cook dinner. It was basically make love to her husband. And that was it. You know, the husband felt, you know, the, the wife at that time felt like she's so proud of her husband because for the most part, he was out there. You know what I'm saying? You know, working and, and, and putting himself on da in dangerous ways. And so she felt proud of him. The family felt proud of him because he was out there doing what he needed to do to provide for the family. There was a sense of admiration because of the decision he made to work and to live and, and to work for the family. On the other side, there was a complete, there was also complete adoration for the mother and the wife. Why? Because the husband knew that, hey, I'm out here all this time. And so therefore, you know, she, my wife is home. She's taking care of the family. She's making sure when I come in that I'm being taken care of. She's taking care of the kids. She's keeping things together. And so after World War II, when, when, the, when, the, when the men was away at work and the women, I mean, at war and the women was in the factory, the women were making the money, then all of a sudden now you had this situation where you came home and it felt like there was a conflict. Now the women was feeling like, hey, we're not just homemaids. We actually can make money too. Matter of fact, we're just as useful as you. Matter of fact, in some things, we're even better than you. And so now the men come back and a big challenge with our culture and society with, with roles and responsibility is that some men are still thinking traditionally. They're still thinking that, hey, because I work, this woman's supposed to just do this. This is supposed to be her role and her responsibilities. And there's some women that's thinking, well, wait a minute, time has changed. Okay, I got just the amount of ability to do it's the same thing you do. And so what happens when you have that? When you have two people looking at the same thing, but you have them looking at it differently. You're going to have conflict. So is the same thing with things around the house. Their responsibilities. And so as we've transitioned over life, as we transition through different ages, we've seen, we've seen an influx and a transformation of the roles and responsibilities. So know this. When I think about roles, I think that roles are always going to be there. The husband will always be the husband. He will always be the man of the house. The woman, she will always be the woman. She will always be the woman of the house. Now within those roles, okay, there comes now responsibilities. In the past, the responsibility was already delegated based off of your role. But we live in, a, I believe we live in a new age now, where now the way you can look at it and the way I look at it is we have a, we have a bowl full of responsibilities. And what are they? Responsibilities to take care of the, you know, I mean, to take care of the finances, you know, okay, to, to to make money for the household, to take kids, to take care of the kids, to to run errands, to cook, to clean, okay, to wash things down, to vacuum, to take out the trash, to respond to situations, and so now we have all these responsibilities. Back in the day, you already knew. If you was a man, you did this. If you was a woman, you did that. But now times has changed, 
And so here's one of the things, especially when it comes to living in the household, what I found that really can help with that is where we understand that we write that we have all these responsibilities. Now, based off the responsibilities, who is now going to do those? And so here's an exercise that I did with my family that I think is a strategy that may help you. So if you have a family and you, you know, if you're in a family and you have kids or you have a significant other and you guys battle over who does chores, who does this, that, and the other, how does you, how do you guys make money? Where does the money go? Here's what I recommend you do. Number one, okay, number one, you already settled the score that I am a man, you are a woman, we're of equal value in this relationship. You start with that. We're of equal value. We both have plenty to give. Then you start with what are responsibilities and you write down what are all the things that we have to be responsible for. We have to be responsible for. You write that down. It can come down to cooking, cleaning, washing dishes. It can come down to taking out the trash. It can come down to getting the kids up, getting them ready, taking them to school. You write all those things down. Now here's where the rubber meets the room. Here's where you'll take your family to the next level. Each person has that list. Each adult has that list. Each parent has that list. And then as you go down, I want you know what I'm saying, I want you to, to put a star or circle by the ones that you feel more passionate about. The ones that you feel that you're really good at. Okay? It could be finances. Like who manages the finances? But well, that's not a male or a female thing. It's whoever is passionate about it or whoever has a skill set. And as you're going down, you just say, okay, I like the finances. You say, okay, I like to clean, or I like to cook, or I like to organize. Well, you know, I like spending time. I like being there at the kids' practices. I just like to be there. Or you know what? I like to shop. I like to be whatever it may be. But you circle those things that you circle those things that you feel more drawn to out of the list of responsibilities. Now, after you do that, then you look at the list and then you go back and forth. And you say, well, hey, man, what are the areas that you think that, you know, you feel really passionate about or do you feel like you have the skill set to do? You know, there's some parents, there's some that says, hey, when it comes to rearing children, when it comes to doing hair, okay, there's some guys that can do better hair or the kids than the mom can. There's some, there's some guys that, you know, typically you think that the woman gets the kids dressed, but there's some guys that say, hey, man, I got an artistic, you know, style for flair, you know, flair for style. And so I can do that myself. And so, again, you remember, you're just going through and you're just circling. And then you share that list. What are you sharing? You're sharing the list of responsibilities. And now whatever is left over, whatever is left over, okay, is what you now discuss. And you discuss together how will we do this together. How will we grow together? How will we supply together? What is our agreement that we're gonna do so we're not feeling like, hey, you're supposed to do this. No, nobody's supposed to do anything but live, breathe, and die one day, okay? But the fact of the matter is, we get a chance to choose now, communication. And so doing this, what, you, what you're gonna find out is you're gonna find out that now it's in front of you. What's in front of you? The responsibilities that you have to manage. And here's one of the greatest things about having that list and talking about it is that you get a chance to create a game plan. You can probably say, hey, this week, we do it this way. Next week, you do it that way. Next week, you're in control of this. Next week, you're in control of that. So however you do it, communication is always the key. So now back to the message of this video. How do you do that And when it comes down to chores? How do you get each other to help with the chores? Because if, you, if it's all that's left on that list is chores, you're like, well, how in the world I do it? Well, here's a couple of things on what you should do, and I think that what you shouldn't do when it comes to help, when it comes to trying to get help with chores. As a man, okay, listen to me, ladies. Okay, I'm gonna share with you as a man, okay, from my standpoint, and hopefully you get some insight from there. Of course, I want you to share from a woman's standpoint what you think as well. But here's a couple strategies, a couple tips as far as when it comes down to developing it out, especially trying to get the husbands and or the wives to help. Here's a couple things that I found out personal experience. Number one, never ask the person to do something, okay, while they're watching their favorite show. Okay, if, you're, if your favorite show is the stories, if your favorite show is watching Power, if it's watching Price is Right, whatever it is, once you understand about their favorite show, whatever, if they're watching it, never ask them to do something during that time. Because more time than not, you'll, you'll get faced with either ignoring, being ignored, or you'll get something in a response that you're not, you're not gonna be happy with. So again, try to avoid asking for help during their favorite time, a time that they look forward to. Okay, it doesn't mean that they're not going to help, but if you can try to avoid it when, during it while they're watching their same time, while they're watching their favorite thing, try to avoid 
avoid that. The next thing is don't ask for help for this person as soon as they get home. See, not asking for, if, see, have, have you ever experienced a situation as soon as you got home? When you just come home, sometimes you just want to debrief. You already didn't work for this person and you were kind of almost forced, it felt like, to work and to answer and respond and be, you know, have some all up in your space at work. And you come home, you just want to relax. And your last thing you want is somebody to bombard you with, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? And so for a husband and or a wife, mother and or a father, trying to make sure just trying to make sure that, hey, when they come in the house, the first thing you do is not to bombard them with things. You see, this message works as well for children as well. You see, I think sometimes if we, if we start from a place of empathy, I think it makes this one so much easier, which means this. If I think about what is it like for that person during their day, what are some of the stresses that they face throughout their day? And I think about, hey, when I first see them, I want to be the relief. I want relief. The relief for them. I want to be the exhale plate, the person where they can exhale, the environment where they can feel safe and secure. Because I'm empathetically thinking about them. And if you think about it that way, the last thing you'll want is somebody just to come and give you another thing to do. The last thing you'll want is another person that's giving you some type of demand, giving you some, some type of timeline. And so understanding that empathetically, dealing with them, says when they come home, what I will do, I will greet you with a blessing. I will greet you with a hug. I will act like this is the first time and the last time I've seen you. And I may feel, make you feel special. Why do you think Why do you think they say a dog is a man's best friend? And in some cases, it's a woman's best friend too. Because what is the characteristic about a dog? What is it something unique about a dog that we can take from? You know, okay, whether it's the cutest dog, smallest dog, biggest dog. That is the fact that no matter when you come around, no matter what you did or didn't do, that dog is always happy to see you. And so if you take that approach when a person comes in the house, okay, and that person, you know, you being excited about seeing them, you get up out of your way, intentionally go to hug them, versus you go to hug them, greet them, say hi, whatever it may be, that's going to go a long, long way. And so remember this, when they come home, don't start asking them things to do as soon as they come home. Okay, because, and then the third thing is understand this, timing is everything. The timing has to be right. Okay, the timing has to be right. I know you're saying, well, wait a minute, it gotta get done. Yes, guess what? But would you rather it get done with peace, gratitude, acceptance, or would you wanna get it done with, you know, from a standpoint of kicking and screaming? When's the last time you asked somebody to do something and they basically pouted their way to do it? You're like, man, forget it, I don't want you to do this. I'll do it myself. And so understanding the timing, and everybody has a certain timing. How about asking your me, hey, um, when is the best time for me to ask you to do something for me? Do you have a better time? Just throw it out there. You may be surprised with the answer you get, but the fact of the matter, if you throw it out there, if you ask them, I guarantee you they'll give you some insight. And in them giving you insight, they're giving you something that, that you can now use. And so understanding that, okay, here's another one. Here's another thing to remember. Don't overwhelm them. Don't overwhelm them with, hey, I need you to take out the trash, then I need you to come back, I need to wash the car, I need to go to, I need you to go to the bank, go to the bank, I need you to go to the grocery shop, put the food away, wash the dishes, clean out the thing, hey, put a load, load of laundry in, don't forget to make the bed, you know what I'm saying, don't forget to stack the socks, put the socks inside out, okay, put the clothes in the dryer. No, don't overwhelm them, like, whoa, don't do it. Instead, you know what I'm saying, instead, just walk it out a little bit. A little bit here, a little bit there, okay? I don't know if you got it or not, but we used to have chore sheets. And after we go through our list of writing all the things down, after we go through the list of dividing up who has what and who feel passionate about what, and now we start to say, okay, what are we going to do together? Then we start putting that thing on the refrigerator. Because at the end of the day, what's, what's better than communication? Okay? What's better than communication? And so understand and listen, don't overwhelm them. Next thing is spell it out to them. Spell it out to him, spell it out to her. What does it look like to you? Have you ever had a situation where you wanted somebody to do something, but in your mind, you wanted them to do it a certain way? For example, for example, I know a lot of women may experience this and husbands may experience this. They say, listen, I like to have a clean house, but clean to a one person may be di clean, differently clean to another person. One person may like to stack up, stack things. Another person, when they think clean, they think, man, I got to get on the inside. I got to get down and dirty. I know growing up, when I was growing up, when clean, when it was Saturdays, it was cleaning day. Cleaning day meant you're on your hands and knees with some Lysol, with some pine soil, whatever, some hot water, and a scrub brush clean, cleaning the white baseboards. 
that meant that you're behind the toilet. Okay, you're wiping things down, you're scrubbing the tub, you're doing all this stuff. That's what cleaning meant to me when I was growing up. And so when I think about cleaning now, I think about really understanding there's levels of cleaning. But then you might want to have a person who they may never have done that. When they think cleaning, they just think, oh, okay, I'll just put things over there and I'm good. And so again, understanding that, you know, we might have different perceptions about it. We might come from a different perspective. And getting an understanding about it. Hey, when, when we say we want to do this, what does that mean to you? Okay, so spell it out for them. Spell it out for the person exactly what that looks like for you. So that way that they can help from there. And the next thing is, listen, when a person does do something, let them know. Let them know how happy you are. Let them know how appreciative you are. Gush them with gratitude and thank them for the help. Hey, listen, I just want to say thank you for helping me. I want to say thank you for taking out the trash. I want to say thank you for making up the bed. I want to say thank you for cleaning up. I want to say thank you for putting the kids down the bed. I want to say thank you because of this. And beyond just saying thank you, watch this. If you want to take it to the next level, tell them what you're thankful for and why. Say, you know what, I'm grateful, man. I appreciate you going to work and coming home today because there's a lot of people out there that's not. It's a lot of people that are walking around with a mask on. They're seeing one thing, but they're doing another. And so I just appreciate you being honest. Hey, I appreciate you washing the dishes tonight and putting up the dishes and, and cleaning up the kitchen. Because guess what? Somebody had to do it. And, and guess what? It makes our house look fresh. It smell fresh. It makes your house seem clean. So I, I just want to say thank you for that. And say, so you know what? Hey, I appreciate. Thank you so much for. Thank you so much for making the bed. Because it's something about when the bed is made, it just lets me know that I'm prepared for the day. And so not only are you saying thankful, being thankful and, and, and saying thanks, but you're also showing and sharing why. And you're saying, what does it mean to you? You see, even as a young kid, everybody likes to be praised. Everybody likes to be shown a sense of gratitude. But even more so, when you're able to tell a person how it makes you feel and how important it is, we all like to please people at a certain point in our lives. And when we know we're pleasing somebody and our little actions is going a long way. More times than likely, more times than not, we're more likely to do more of it. And so again, understand that gush them, okay, with gratitude. Let them know how to do it. We say, well, wait a minute. Well, what about my kids now? We're talking about the adults. We got to get the kids to help too. These little jokers around here, man, they're like experts and dirty and stuff. Well, we got to get them to help. How do I do that? Well, one of the ways you like to do it is, you know, you got to understand, listen, man, you got to pay this thing forward, man. You got to show them. You got to be the example. That means husbands, fathers, you got to show them what is it like? What do men do? What do men do? Yes, we clean up. Yes, we take out the trash. Yes, we clean the cars out. Yes, we do the different things. Yes, we cook. Yes, we clean. Listen, I challenge every father, every male to be a renaissance man. You think about back in the Garden of Eden before Eve ever came along, Adam had to be able to do it all. And so, so do you. When you as a, as a male understand, listen, I got to be able to do it all. That means I got to have the ability to do it all. So that way, as I'm raising the next generation, they understand that it's not her for her situation. It's not her job. It can be my responsibility. And the more skills you have, the more you develop in your children, the more likely they're able to model it. How many kids right now are doing what they saw their father, their parents do? How many, how many children are doing what they saw their fathers do? How many children are doing what they saw their mothers do? Hey, we do this. Why? Because when I was growing up, this is what I saw. This is what they did. This is what they said. And so when we, wanted, when we want to get the family to help with chores, we got to model it out. We have to show that we're a uni unified front. It starts with the leadership. And then it goes from there. You say, well, wait a minute. What if I'm just a single parent and it's just me? It's the same way. Okay? It's the same way. You find out. You model this thing out. You model it out. You show that you show that young man, if you're a single mother, you show that young man, okay, that child that you're raising, okay, you show them somebody that's doing it right, another male that's doing it right, and why. You research it. You put that into their mindset. You allow them to digest it, okay? Same thing for you if you have, if you have a daughter. You showing them, hey, this is what daughters do. You see, there's a chores list that, um, that, that I like that I printed out, and it was an age, it was an age-appropriate chores list. And when you think about it, what kind of chores can they do at certain ages? Because the earlier you get them to start helping out, the more it is stick in their mindset, the more they'll be able to understand that, hey, this is not for somebody else to do. This is what I do. So that's one way to get children to help, you know, pay it forward. To get them to help, pay it forward. Show them, model it for them. Okay, don't make any excuse, model it. Do it with them. Okay, today we're going to do this. Today we're going to do this. The next thing is make it mandatory. 
See, on Saturdays growing up for us, man, it was mandatory <laughs> that we cleaned up. We didn't have a choice. We had to wash clothes. Okay, that's back when we didn't have washers, and our washers seemed like it never worked, so we had to put them in a tub. We had to put the, the, the detergent in there, and we had to stomp away, baby. We had to track me. No wonder I was so fast, because I had to track me washing clothes, baby. You thought it was you thought it was because I worked on my speed all the time. It was just in my genetics, but it was washing those clothes. And then it was basically you was wondering why my shoulders were strong. It was from hanging up the clothes, <laughs> hanging up the clothes on the clothespin out the back. Listen, it all had, you know what I mean? You wonder why, you know, I might have played soccer and I was good. Well, I learned that because we didn't have the hampers, so we had to wrap all of our dirty clothes up in a big old sheet and we had to roll it down. We had to roll it down the steps. And so again, making it mandatory for the kids, letting them know, hey, this is what we do. And this needs to be done by this time. Make it mandatory. You see, in life, nobody minds being changed. Nobody don't mind being changed. They don't mind change, right? But they don't want to be changed. Most people don't like discipline, but they love what discipline does to, for them. And so again, a lot of these chores, a lot of these things we're building, we're building the habits, we're teaching them and developing them. Okay, and we're doing it. And only, sometimes only, the only way to do it is to make it mandatory, you know what I'm saying, for, for the kids, all right? And then as I said before, give age appropriate tasks for these kids. And so again, you know, as we think about it, start with roles, put together the responsibilities, Allow the family to be a part of that, okay? All right, allow them to be a part of that and say, okay, what do we do? Who's gonna do what? Who's gonna do what? Circle them, check them off, come up with a strategy, and then execute it. I never won a game without having a game plan. I never won by accident. I never won a race when I ran track by accident. I did it because I practiced it, and I put it in place, and then I exercised. And then at halftime in the game, if we weren't winning, what did I do? I tweak, I tweak what I had to do so I can go out and I can do better. And so we'll have to constantly work at it. And so listen, these are just a couple strategies on how do we get our family to help out with the chores? How do we get our, the wives, the husbands, the significant others, okay, the boyfriend, girlfriend, how do we get the children to help out with the chores? And then the other thing, again, that I like to do with children, man, is we like to pay them, I like to pay them for chores. So here's one of the things that I did with my kids um, growing up. I actually had a chore sheet. And what I put on there is I put taking care of yourself was one category. And I had brush your teeth, I had wash your face, put lotion on, get dressed. Then I had taking care of the house was the next section. And then taking care of the house was, hey, it was making up your bed, it was it was cleaning your bathroom, uh, cleaning the bathroom, it was taking, it was cleaning the living room, cleaning the dining room, putting the dishes away, washing the dishes in there. And then the last one was bonus stuff. It was hey read for you know read for 45 minutes you know what I'm saying have a workout um, uh, you know uh, you know, wash the car or clean vacuum the car it was other different bonus things that I can have them do and for each thing they did I gave seven I gave a, I gave a dime I gave a dime for each thing that they would that they would do and so here was a requirement at the end of the week you had to have okay you had to have at least 70 70 chores done. So that means out of all three of those things, okay, all three of those categories and all the things we had on there, okay, you had to have at least 70 in order to get paid. So that means if you had 69, 69 um, asterisks or, or chores that you did or activities that you did, you wouldn't get paid. But once you hit 70 and above, now you got paid. And so for every one, you know what I'm saying, was a dime. And so again, as they were young, we started to do that. And here's one of the great things I even said, I even saw that on that list, I even had reading books. I had leadership books, little small John Maxwell book. And I said, hey, read this book. Okay, read this book, okay? Here's $5 to read, you know what I'm saying, to read this book. Or $10 to read this book. Or a quarter to read this book, whatever size of the book it was. But here's what it developed. It developed a sense that, by doing that, it helped a sense that, you know what, for my labor, I can earn the reward. And the more that I work and the more that I do to take care of myself, take care of my home, and then to go above and beyond, I get to have the reward of it. And so listen, man, I want to know, what are some of the things that you do? What are some things you do to help your family in terms of helping chores around the house? Listen, I'm Donovan Darius, man, former 10-year NFL player, professional life strategist, motivational speaker. Listen, if you like these messages, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and share. All these messages will be up on YouTube, okay, and on my net, on my server. Remember, as you continue to living, living all pro, winning in the family, okay, winning in the family.
by working together to doing chores, man. Listen, y'all be blessed, man. Have a wonderful day, wonderful evening. I'm out. Peace.